He's the leader of the Avengers and one of Marvel Comics' oldest characters, but if you don't know where to start with Captain America, then this is the video for you. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Now the first Captain America title that I'm going to recommend to you should come as a surprise to absolutely nobody because it's the run that was done by Ed Brubaker. For me this is the best Captain America run which is why I put it at the top of the list because this was the first ever time that I read one of his solo titles. And despite the nostalgia bias that I might have for it, it still comes highly recommended. This one reinvented Captain America for a modern post 9-11 audience without needing to mention 9-11 all the time. It did the unthinkable with bringing Bucky back as the Winter Soldier which is just something that people thought wouldn't work. But Brubaker pulled it off so well that writers after this run can't seem to do a Captain America title without bringing him into it. The opening arc had a massive reveal about the Red Skull and it just had phenomenal art throughout. And throughout the beginning part of this run there was also flashback scenes that were done by Michael Lark. So it does still give you some of that historical background if it is that you want to complete Captain America experience. And I think the most impressive thing about this run is that he managed to tell a coherent yet interesting story whilst all these events were going on at Marvel that directly impacted Captain America. So if you did already know a little bit about the Marvel Universe already, with events such as Civil War, and also if you were a fan of something like the New Avengers, then this is pretty much the only one that you'd ever need to get invested into Cap. This is such a great series, which is why I included it in my Where to Start Marvel, because if there was one go-to for Cap, it's going to be this. And I won't say too much more about this, because I've got other picks on this list that I need to talk about, and also because I've got an upcoming video that I've got planned for Ed Brubaker's run. And all I can say for now is that I think that this series is just the best. Next up, and hopefully this is another familiar name, because I'm going with the run by the man himself, Mark fucking Wait. This seemed to be the series that gave a new breath of life to Captain America, and again, similar to Ed Brubaker, there's multiple ways that you could read this. At an absolute bare minimum, I'd recommend checking out Operation Rebirth. And this is one of those concepts that sounds dumb if you say it out loud, and I think it might turn a few people off, so I'm not really going to say too much here, except just trust me. But it's a fantastic, relatively short story about Captain America having to work alongside his greatest foe, the Red Skull. So it's a great introduction into their dynamic, even if it is a little bit different from what you'd expect. And at the same same time, Wade did a great job of bringing both of these characters back to the classic interpretation. But then after this, if you did like Wade's style of storytelling, then, you know, why wouldn't you? You can continue with his run that he did for Heroes Return. This took place a few years after Operation Rebirth, but yet again, it is another fresh start for the character. But Mark Wade carried this series for over 20 issues, so if you did want something meaty that you could really get stuck into, and especially if you did like Operation Rebirth, then this would be a perfect jumping on point. It understands that everybody might not know everything that's gone on in the 60 or so years of Captain America's history but he's just trying to tell you an enjoyable story with Steve Rogers. And a little bonus recommendation, Mark Wade came back and did a six issue stint on Steve Rogers back in 2017 along with Chris Somney. I was reading this as it came out, but I don't think I read the end of it, but it still feels like this would be a great jumping on point for new readers. So if you wanted something shorter, more recent, but still written by Mark Wade, then this would be a perfect recommendation for you. Or if you knew that you already like this duo working together from the titles such as Black Widow and Daredevil. Next up, I'm going to be recommending Captain America by Dan Jurgens. This one is the one that immediately immediately follows after Mark Wade left, but I still think that it's a great jumping on point. And Dan Jenkins just seems to be that writer that's a massive name and he's worked on big titles, but he often lives in the shadow of other creators. Which I don't think is fair at all, especially when it comes to his Captain America run. Because the thing with Captain America, and especially titles that were coming out after the 80s, they understand that there's a lot of history with this character. And Dan Jenkins seems to understand that as well, and create a run that incorporates all that history without it ever being a barrier for a new reader. And although he does try to change a few things with his origin story, it's still Steve Rogers that its core. There's also a great plot involving AIM and I just think that this is one of those overlooked runs. It did get an omnibus last year which I do believe is still in print so this would be one that's very easily accessible and just because it's following a massive name like Mark Wade, it doesn't mean that this isn't worth your attention and it is still a great jumping on point. After that and another more recent run I'm going to be recommending Captain America by Tanahisi Coates. Again apologies if I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly. But if you're looking for a more meaty, recent, thought provoking run then Coates has you covered. He was writing this alongside his Black Panther run and I feel like this often gets overshadowed for that and maybe I'm part of that problem as well because I recommended it when I did me where to start Black Panther. And full disclosure, I only read the first 12 or so issues of this and there is a little bit that you would need to know about the goings on of Hydra before this. But at the same time, it does still do a good enough job of catching you up so that you haven't really got any barriers with this. And if we're being perfectly blunt about it, the first ever Captain America comics required you to know what was going on in World War II. So in hindsight, this is actually a little bit more accessible. But what I love most about this run and the reason why I think you should just get over those hurdles is because it really explored what America meant to Steve and who he really is as a man when the country that he's fighting for turns its back on him. It can often get 
quite political, which I know is something that can turn a lot of people off when it comes to comics. But if there's one character that should have his finger on the button of politics, it's probably going to be Steve Rogers. I'm hoping that the rest of the run is as enjoyable as that first arc, and I definitely will be picking up that omnibus later this year. And you can also order it with the discount codes that we've got with the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services. And if you use code Woof Woof, you'll get two dollars off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code Woof Woof, ship it together for five percent off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below, and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Another title, if you're looking for something a little bit shorter, is gonna be Captain America White. It's pretty much the retelling of Cap's time during World War II, and even though I haven't read absolutely everything about this character, I still feel like this is pretty much the go-to origin story. You get a lot of time with Stephen Bucky, he's going up against the Red Skull and his army, but at the same time it does still acknowledge that he is an integral member of the Marvel Universe and the leader of the Avengers. It manages to do all that without taking up too much of your time, so I definitely think it deserves a spot on this list. And if you already know that you like the works of Loeb and Sale, then why shouldn't you check this out, even if it isn't on par with some of their other works? Well, maybe you're the type of person that likes Captain America, but you don't want to have to deal with all the war stuff. Maybe it's just all a bit too grim and it reminds you of that movie Fury and just the fact that, like, there was no happiness in that film. So if you're wanting a title that doesn't take itself as seriously as that, I would definitely recommend checking out Rick Remender's run. If you are looking for a change of pace from the soldier type story, then this definitely would work for you, especially in the beginning with all the stuff with Armin Zola and Dimension X. But it's almost like everything that you love from Rick Remender's Fear Agent, but just with Captain America as the main character. It is cool, he's still the same Steve Rogers that you know from any other series. And it also features a debut with Sam Wilson wielding the shield, so it manages to reinvent itself part way through the run. This was just one of those titles that always kept me guessing, and there's even a great story involving the Winter Soldier part way through. And if you are wanting to branch into the more modern Marvel universe, then I think this would be a great entry point because it also crosses over with Secret Wars. So this is one of those runs that I don't think it's the best ever for the character, but it just manages to hit it from so many different angles. And because this is a title that took him out of his comfort zone and also introduced different people into the role, I think this is great if you're a new reader, but you're wanting something that connects to the modern history. Okay, might as well get another controversial one out of the way, but I'm going to recommend Nick Spencer. Yes, I know a lot of people did not like this and pretty much only remember it for that one moment, but when I think about this run overall, it's a bit similar to Ed Brubaker in some ways because it was responsible for pushing Captain America back to the front of the Marvel Universe. In short, it does take some liberties with Steve Rogers, but I felt like this was a great run if you wanted to explore more of the Captain America family. And in a weird way, this is kind of like the opposite of Rick Remender's run because it starts with Sam as Captain America and then brings back Steve as the main character. So I would still recommend this to a new reader who is looking for more of a thriller type of story featuring Captain America that has a lot of intrigue and mystery throughout and even builds up to an event that centers around Steve as a character. And even though I'll be the first to admit that this isn't the best run, it still might be the best entry point for you. Or maybe you're the type of person that likes early 2000s storytelling, in which case I'd definitely recommend Captain America and the Falcon by Christopher Priest. But these 14 issues were really something special that felt like it was cut a bit too short because of Avengers Disassembled. And I've read this a few years ago and it really reminded me of the TV show 24, but you know, just with Captain America and Falcon. Which, if we're being honest, there was a lack of in 24. But the friendship of Steve and Sam is really tested throughout this, as one is tasked with hunting down the other, and they get wrapped up in a storyline with this drug cartel, whilst at the same time, all these massive changes are happening throughout the universe. So although I do think this is a pick that's better for people who know a bit about what was going on in the Marvel Universe at that time, or maybe you're already a fan of the new Avengers, this is still a great story that isn't going to take up too much of your time, but there's still enough here that you can really get stuck into it. Another suggestion, and I don't think it'd be fair of me to do this list without recommending some team books. The first of which is a very obvious one, but I'm gonna go with the Avengers. Now I have already done a where to start on this team and I'd recommend checking that out if you're looking for any specific recommendations. But let's be honest, if there's an Avengers title, nine times out of ten, Captain America's gonna be leading it. So my personal favourite picks, I'm gonna go with pretty much anything by Bendis, especially new Avengers, the run that was done by Jonathan Hickman, and also the one that's done by Bruce E. and Perez. And it might be the case that you already know a lot about these characters, you might be an Iron Man fan or a Hulk fan or you might already be a fan of the Avengers, then by reading one of these runs you can learn a lot about Captain America that you can then transfer into one of these solo series. That's pretty much how I got started, I didn't just jump into Ed Brubaker's run, I was just a massive fan of Brian Michael Bendis. And the same path might work for you, so if you're completely new to comics but you really know that you like Cap as a character, then don't be afraid to jump into one of these team books. And I had to include this on this video because I've now done three of the four main characters from this team, and yep, 
Iron Man's going to be coming later this year, but a team book that I'm going to give a specific shout out to is going to be the Secret Avengers. I just feel like this is different from anything that's about the Ace Mightiest Heroes, and you get to see Captain America working alongside a team that he often normally wouldn't. It was during that time when there was about five or six different Avengers teams, and I do think that this is one of the special titles. Like, how many times do you get to see Captain America working in the same team as Beast and Moon Knight? It's also just more about espionage and spy thrillers, so if you like something like The Losers, or you just want in something that's a little bit different from the main offering that you'd get with the Avengers, then why not check out this one because I feel like this has been overlooked when it comes to the modern Marvel universe. The last team book that I'm going to recommend is going to be Always an Invader. Now I don't know a lot about the Invaders but I checked this out last year and I do think that it's a great introduction into both this team and also Captain America. There's a similar technique that was going on in Ed Brubaker's run where it has flashbacks to the past but there's also a modern story. And yeah, you might want to know a little bit about why Namor's being such a prick throughout this. But still, the Invaders is a smaller, more close-knit group that has an integral part in Captain America's history. So although you can read some of the earlier runs for this character, I do think that this mini-event that was done by Chip Zdarsky is one that you might want to check out. And if you still aren't confident enough to jump into a solo Captain America series, you might want to check out an event. Now this sounds backwards, and I know in the few times that I've recommended this before, I've realised what I'm saying as I say it. Which doesn't happen that often. But you might be somebody who knows a lot about the Marvel Universe and Captain America is just that character that you haven't really branched into. Well, you're fortunate because he's pretty much involved in the majority of the events that Marvel's done. You could jump into something like Secret Wars from the 80s, Infinity Gauntlet has one of the best Captain America moments in all of comics, there's Civil War even if maybe he does act a little bit different from the Captain America that you expect, you've got Secret Empire, Siege, Avengers vs X-Men, and although I know a lot of people don't like an event, and I'm an apologist for them, I still think there's a lot of good quality Captain America stuff that happens in some of these titles. And when I do me where to start, I always stress that there's no right or wrong way of starting to read a character. As long as it's something that you enjoy and it's going to teach you about them whilst entertaining you at the same time, then who cares if it's not somebody else's favourite run? And in saying that, my next recommendation is going to be the MCU. It'd be stupid of me to ignore this because of the power that these movies have. Especially the three Captain America films, they are some of the best of this whole franchise. On top of that, you have got the Avengers movie movies and I'm not really going to waste too much time talking about these because the majority of the planet Earth knows that these exist. It nails the most important parts about his origin and his character so these are great jumping on points even if they aren't necessarily a comic. Now before my last recommendation I want to preface it by saying that this has been a bit of a smaller where to start. I've reduced the number of entries on this list and only included ones that I've read personally. There's been ones before where I've taken suggestions but for me Captain America's that character that he just always surprises me with how many series he's had. These are just the ones that I can personally recommend but you might like some of the early Jack Kirby stuff or you might like that one that came before Ed Brubaker where the art was done by John Cassidy and me not including it on this list doesn't mean that it might not be a good jumping on point but regardless I knew when I did a list of where to start Captain America I had to include the run that was done by Mark Grunewald. This to me is pretty much the equivalent of Peter David's run on the Hulk because it just went on for so long and covered so much material and there's so many different jumping on points throughout the 10 years that he was writing this book and admittedly that might be an easier way to read this because it seems like Marvel still reluctant to release an omnibus. But in particular, the reason why I really love the Captain arc and why I'm highlighting that over anything else is because this was just really special to me. I got the trade paperback of this just shortly after I'd read a bit of Ed Brubaker's run and it just showed how pure of a character Steve Rogers is and that he's more than just this symbol. That if he doesn't believe in something, he will gladly leave it all behind and still fight for what he believes is right. It also introduced the US agent who's now a part of the MCU and that's not the only great thing that Mark Grunewald did for this character. Yeah, I'm kind of going to ignore Catwoman but even that isn't as bad as people remember. I can't wait for the day until I can read this full thing, but at the same time, I've enjoyed everything that I've read from this run. And because of that, I had to recommend it on this list, and hopefully this gets the attention that it deserves. But those are all my recommendations. In the comment section below, let me know what the first Captain America book was that you ever read. And until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, and stay mad all you dogs. We're both. See you the next video.